Hey guys, we're on the road again. We're going to make a fairly simple yet decorative wrap for our shifting gear. As you can see, this little sucker here was a bit worn out, so what I did was I sanded it, and I'm now going to place a decorative Turk's head knot onto it. We're going to do one that's very simple, which is also referred to as a lazy man button knot. And what we're going to do is first tie a Turk's head knot and then tighten it up onto this shifting gear. Now I measured this one out and the diameter is about 2 inches. The wrap that I'm about to show you will work for this size of a shifting gear as well as a bit of a larger one. With that said, let's get started. To start our project off, we're going to take a PVC pipe that is going to act for our mandrel. Now, this PVC pipe is slightly larger than the shifting gear knob that we're using. So in my case, the diameter of the shifting gear knob is about 2 inches, so this PVC pipe is also about 2 inches. As you can see, I have attached a rubber band, and I'm going to also attach one piece of paracord. For this diameter of a shifting gear knob, you are going to need three pieces of paracord, and each should be about seven and a half feet long. Now, you can take three different colors of paracord to get a multicolor effect, or you can just use a single color to get a single toned version. So to start off, what I did was, I attached one end of my paracord under a rubber band. I placed a lacing needle onto the other end, and this is going to be my working end. The cord is about 7.5 feet long, and we're going to start by wrapping around once, and coming over the standing end. We're going to wrap around again, come over here towards the right side, then take our lacing needle and travel under over towards the left side. Come around again and double up your standing end, so travel under over towards the right side, like this, then again take your lacing needle and travel towards the left side, over, under, over. Like this. Come around again, and we're going to split the standing end as well as the cord that's doubling it up. So we're going to start with an over, under, and over. So like this. We went between the standing end and the cord that was doubling it up, and we did the opposite. We're now going to take our lacing needle, and we're going to go the opposite of this cord, so under, over, under, and over. Like this. When we come to our standing end, we are again going to double it up. So, under, over, under, and over. Like this. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to travel the opposite of this cord here. So, over, under, over, under, and over.
we again have the standing end and a cord that's doubling it up. We're going to travel between them and do the opposite of what these two cords are doing. So we're going to go over, then under. Then over, under, and over. Like this. And then we are again going to go the opposite of this chord. So under, over, under. Over, under, and over. Like this. And we again come to the standing end, which we are again going to double up. So, under, over, under, over, under, and over. And from right to left, we're going to go the opposite of this chord. So we're going to travel over, under, over, under, Over, under, and over. And again we have the standing end and the cord that's doubling it up. We're going to start with an over, then under, over, under, Over, under, and finally we exit with an over on the right side. We are at our last pass, and we again are going to travel the opposite of this chord. So we're going to start with an under, over, under. Over, under, over, under, and over. At this point, place your working end next to the standing end, under one, and you have completed your knot. All you do now is you work in some of your working end like this, and you distribute this slack over the entire knot by basically pulling it in and loosening up your knot. This is going to help you when we introduce the second and the third chord. So basically you just work in some slack into the knot to make your job a bit easier. After loosening up your first knot, we're going to attach a second piece of paracord onto one side of our standing end. This second piece of paracord is again the same length as the first cord. So in my case, seven and a half feet. Onto this second cord, I have attached my lacing needle, and now all we're going to do is follow the standing end of our first cord all through the knot in order to double it up. Now, once you will finish doubling up your knot, you should come out where the working end of your first cord was. So to start, you can see that the standing end of our first cord is traveling under one. 
So we're going to start with an under one. Like this. And you can see that the standing end is beginning to double up. We continue the same way. So over one, under one. Like this. Then over one, under one. Over one, under one. Then over one. And then we turn around and follow our standing end towards the left side. We never cross the standing end of our first chord. So if we take a look, you can see that both ends or both chords are doubling up the knot. And at the turn, we simply turn around and follow our standing end without crossing it. And you do this until you come out the working end. Again, you can see how nicely the knot doubles up. After we have doubled up our Turk's head, we should have two standing ends together and two working ends together. The entire knot will have a two-pass look. Now, what we're going to do at this point is introduce the third chord, which again is seven and a half feet long. And all we're going to do is exactly the same thing that we did before. So we're going to take our third chord, and we're going to place it onto the left side of my standing end. So like this. So onto the left side of my second pass. So we have the third chord, which again is going to follow the other two. And you can see that the knot is beginning to triple up. Continue until you have tripled the entire knot. Once you have tripled your knot, you should have three standing ends together, as well as three working ends together as well. Now, one thing that we need to do here is to secure our working ends a bit better. As you can see, the standing ends are tucked quite securely here under this bite. The working ends, on the other hand, if we cut them here, would tend to slip out. Now, the easiest solution to this problem is to take each of your working ends and immediately where you come out here, you re-enter back into the knot go under the entire knot and exit here at the top. This is how you secure your working ends. And you would do the same with the other two. So again, you attach a lacing needle onto the other working end. Then immediately where you come out of the knot, you re-enter, go under the knot and exit on the top side.
and do that with the third chord as well. Again, immediately where you exit with your working hand, you go back in, then under the knot and up the top. The last step is to take your knot, place it onto the shifting gear knob and then tighten it up. If you are able to detach the shifting gear knob off of the shifting gear, it is a lot easier to tighten up the knot. But in most cases, I think that you will tie the knot, then simply place it onto the knob and tighten it up. Now, to tighten up such a knot, we start at the standing ends. We take one and we start by holding it a bit and beginning to pull out the slack. And we run through the entire knot and pull out the slack. And we're going to do that with all three of the passes and then pull the slack out of the working ends. So this does take a bit of time, especially if you're not able to detach your knob off of the shifting gear, because you're going to have to rotate yourself around the knot and pull out the slack. So guys, with that we came to the end of this tutorial. I hope that it will come in handy. Thank you and see you next time.